Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the podcast, and this is a rare encounter where I've actually got to catch up with Luke. Most of the time I just mither him to death about random things. Luke, welcome to my podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> I can't believe you've been here, like, how many years now? Five years now. Five which, years which, now. which is strange, because I do remember walking in through the first office. Oh, the old office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and being, like, sat next to and babysat until I got to this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I just pester you about random stuff, basically. Just writing tutorials after lead magnets and, you know. Re- and re- blogs. Re- that and, and the blogs. All that stuff. So I thought we should talk about today about repurposing content. Whenever I'm on, I'm on calls with people, I always get people saying to me, yeah, but how do we not say the same stuff? And I go... Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Yeah, it's strange because people are adverse to, oh, maybe people will get boring. I was like, yeah, but you post something out there into the universe and you're assuming everyone's going to see it. Yeah. First time. Uh, Wouldn't it be nice if that happened? Like you put something up and people actually saw everything you did. That would like, we'd all be millionaires by now. Yeah, if everyone, if everyone in your prospect immediately went, oh, I've seen that one before. It's fine. I don't need to worry about it. It's like, no, they're just going to, you're going to post something. Um, your immediate connections and anyone you've engaged with is going to see it and then they'll probably go back and then you have to do it again to get the more prospects you've connected with, the more engagement people you've, you know, worked and built. So saying the same thing over and over again, isn't that just building a brand? Well, yes, yes it is. <laughs> but but people think, oh, I don't want to say that. And I suppose we find that sometimes as well is the stuff we know like, there's stuff we know that we take for granted. Yeah. Stuff that, like, um, I did one the other day, and I talked about why it's important to grow your second degree network. Everybody's focused on getting connected with people. But actually, if you have a good bank of second degrees who are the right people, it makes your life a whole lot easier. And people are like, I'd never thought of that before. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was right about this upstairs, actually, because when you're, st- when you're starting your LinkedIn profile, um, Obviously, there's first, second, and third. Thirds are complete strangers. If you connect with too many thirds, your account gets locked down and restricted because you know they're strangers. And second degree connections are the connections of your connections. But in order to get second degrees, you need to connect with people who have wider networks so that pool is larger. So you're not just continuously connecting with third degrees and hoping that your account doesn't get locked down. Yeah. So we're doing something weird at the moment where we're basically documenting 80, 80? Is it 80? It was, yeah, it was like 84. <laughs> 84 different pieces of content. They're being turned into tutorials. They're being turned into step-by-step, like, video guides. They're being turned into a blog, ex- like, why it matters. One idea, one, I just, well, let me ask you. I th- I think people miss the fact that one idea can be, like, broken down like personal branding yeah that's what i think a lot of people do is go i'll write a post about why you should build a personal brand and then i can give you some tips about building a personal brand and then i can do this about personal brand and they stay so high level but what you could do is like drill down into um why is a color scheme matter why is this matter what and like granular detail yeah, if you just focus on the big picture all the time, you're going to have, oh, yeah, I, sh- I know how to do this. I know I should be doing this. And that's what you've, everyone thinks of themselves. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing this. They never know why. It's always the, yeah, I know this is a good idea because it'll help my business. But then it's not, yeah, the, the specifics are left. So all the blog pieces out there, which um, people, anyone in marketing and digital marketing goes, oh, this is what you should be doing. This is what you should be doing. But it's hard because... They just tell you what you should be doing. Yeah. And everyone's like, I know I should be doing this, but I'm not doing it. Should we talk about our, our pet hate for certain blogs on the internet? Yeah. Five it. steps to build your personal brand. Number one, build a personal brand. <laughs> Number two, get that brand out there. Three, get remembered. It's like, oh, I was going to swear then. <laughs> what? Everybody seems to be like playing this like really surface level thing and not going deep in their content like granular breaking it down into little is it just like a fear of if i tell everybody everything they're going to do it i feel like it's a fear of silence 
and that's why the content itself can be a bit surface level where we, we know for a fact if you don't post you'll get forgotten so you need to keep posting but you need to take a step further of why you're posting it what's the purpose of this post and you know you can do the hows and the whys with tutorials but it's it's usually the fear of not posting which gets people to post crap so what you need to do is have that uh, an idea bank of stuff which is actually valuable and you know take it a step further and i feel that's why you get all the blogs which is like why should you be doing this because they talk about what they solve if, if, if they're a personal brand expert they'll talk about why you should have a personal brand mm -hmm. but then like you said it doesn't it doesn't go into the whys of it but do you think if i was if i was selling personal branding consultancy do you think it would harm me if i just dumped the whole every bit of knowledge on the internet out there do you think it would lose me business well, someone could download... I mean, if you did it in one big definitive guide and they yeah. downloaded it, I'd probably say that a couple of people will use it fully. Other people will download it and then just leave it sat on the shelf. So even if you did put everything out there, even if it was in one place, because a lot of the times it's going to be on social media, it's going to be on your website, that's scattered everywhere anyway. Yeah. So who's got time to look through each individual thing, put all that together? And, and then they a, probably won't do it right anyway. Yeah, and then at the same time, they'd have all the tools and all, all like the why you should do it. But then when it comes to implementation, they'll do it wrong, um, mainly because of timing or because they just think, okay, I'm going to copy word for word, template for template, and then get results. Like templates and worksheets are great if you use them and know how to use them right. But there's another step where you have to make them your own as well. Mm -hmm. Because I feel a lot of, I was going to say this might be, uh, I might be causing a rift between other people. <laughs> <laughs> All the coaches be like, no, you can't say that. But what you need to understand is if you put a worksheet, you put tutorials, people are going to come in with their own vision of what they should do. Or they'll copy you word for word and not get the same results because they're not you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you like if you put everything out there, it's all obviously going to be scattered because nobody's going to look through every single post. Nobody's going to take all the information in. Even if you did put it out there, there would be gaps. And I guess where would you rather find where would you rather people learn this information from, you or your competitor? I don't think I don't think you'd lose any business if you put everything you've got out there, as long as you didn't do it systematically. Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're doing module one <laughs> <laughs> and did the whole thing like that. I think that could be a mistake. But if you've scattered all of your content out there, even if it's you've got nothing else left to say, there's nothing else. It's better people find the fragments from you than the fragments from somebody else. Yeah, if you feel like you're giving away your secret sauce every time you post, it's like you'll end up just not posting anything decent and valuable. Like you need to look at you know what you're putting out there and going, someone can use that and someone can use that to achieve a goal. Whatever that goal is, you know, it's up to you, whatever you, whatever you want to create. But yeah, if you're afraid of actually them taking it, using it, and then not coming back to you because they've got all the knowledge, it's not, not going to happen. They're going to come back to you because you gave them some knowledge. Yeah, yeah. it's like the people who go, mm, I'm not posting about that. My competitors might see it. It's like... Yeah, but your customers might see it too. Yeah. It's like these weird, like, kind of false, what do they call them? Um, false dilemmas that mm. we kind of invent. Oh, if I post that and my competitors see it, what might happen? Yeah, the whole scenario was in their heads like, oh, they'll, they'll see what we did there and then they'll copy and use it. But yeah, but by the time they've done that, you've already worked on the next thing. Yeah. Like you've got the next worksheet that everyone's reading from. Whereas they're going to publish something you've done like a couple months ago and someone's going to go, oh, it doesn't matter. I've seen their vision now. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, the big gurus like Tony Robbins and people like that, right? They've got the books. Yeah. They've got a book. You can go to Waterstones and buy their book for like nineteen ninety nine, Unleash the Giant Within or whatever. Why do thousands of people still pay to go see Tony Robbins in person when they can just get the book? Because they want to talk to them, don't they? They, they, they want the insight that they provide solely to them for their own personal questions. Yeah. So it's like, hang on a minute. I could put all of my knowledge in a book, sell the book, then do an in-person workshop and people who've bought the book would come to the in-person workshop. It's like logic that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But human nature, that makes absolute sense because they've absorbed the information. They think it's amazing. So it's worth their while to invest more 
to actually hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, they'll keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back, even if it's the same topic. You know, times change, algorithm change, social media changes. It's not a chance that... Would you say you put on the same webinar every single time you do it, even if it isn't the same topic? Yeah, well, it's the same. I have this, actually. I use the same title on some of my webinars. But when I get into the webinars, because of the nature of it being me talking and presenting stuff, there's always a slightly different influence, yeah, a slightly different angle. If I've spoke to somebody that day about that topic, sometimes what happens is that influences how I present. And so same material, but the emphasis or where I focus more time changes. And so you're right, you end up with a different webinar than the slides. And it's the same with the courses as well. Whenever you, whenever someone's following, say, the 100 Leads program, they have um, their own sort of hurdles they have to get across, which is probably unique sometimes. It was like, oh, I've seen this person struggling with this. Let's say it's creating content or say if it is, you know, breaking down content, they're struggling with doing it in an effective way, which maybe a lot of other students hadn't. From there, then you can create more materials to help that one person. And then whenever someone else comes in who might have that problem again, you've got that. Yeah. And every time I meet somebody with a different struggle, it create it or a slightly different um perspective on a on an issue in an issue. I go, that's rich with content. Every conversation. Oh, I could just explain that conversation, anonymize it, but I could explain that conversation. Yeah. And it's like everywhere you look, there's content that you can stay anchored to your main topics, but actually just give a different angle on the same theme. If you think about the, if you think, if we put this into like perspective of, no, well, people aren't robots, but they are wired certain ways. Like you've got creative people, you've got people who are um, outcome centric, you've got people who need the how to tutorials. Um, like someone, someone creative might see a list of instructions and a list of big book and go, oh, that's, that's boring. I don't want to read through that. Someone who's really analytical will read it page by page and follow every little little detail. So the problems they will have will be different by how they approach the problem. Yeah. So how they can, how they process information creates different, almost dynamics of, of issues and perspectives. Yeah. When we create the guides, when we create the worksheets, you have to have those perspectives in mind. So someone who's having trouble with creating content will download a content creation checklist. But someone who's having problems with, um, you know, the, the tools and the analytics will download a different kind of checklist. They won't need to worry about the content because they've got that locked down. Mm. So you have to have those different kind of materials there. And it's the same with anyone who's creating content, evergreen content. Um, you will have people look at it in a certain way and go, well, I didn't answer this, but I have this problem. And then you create the other part. Mm -hmm. And so when we're coming to creating content, Obviously, you don't want to keep trying to make new, 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 like come up with new ideas all the time. Some of it is just unpacking and repurposing stuff you've already got. So like, other than my microphone glitch today, I recorded a podcast, an audio only podcast the, uh, today. I recorded the audio, I had my camera going, and I had my uh, otter.ai transcript in it so when i'm done with that other than i didn't turn the transcript off so i've got a whole load of why is this microphone not working <laughs> at the end i've got the video yeah i've got the audio bit and i've got the transcript which will need a whole tidy up so immediately i've got a blog i've got a youtube video 10 minute youtube video and i've got the audio podcast but we can go one step further with that content then. So tell me what, what would you, to make that content last a bit longer or go a bit further, what would you do with the audio, the video and the text? So you've got about a 30, 30 minute talk for a topic. So then you would have to transcribe of that. So first you, I'd put it into like a, a document, um, find and replace all the ums and ahs and delete it. So just get rid of it. Um, but from there you have to, you can, you can, chapter it essentially like you, you've got your introduction which will be the introduction but you can see where whenever you're discussing something there's going to be areas we go into so we'll naturally segue from this conversation to a different conversation to a different conversation it just happens mm -hmm. so from there there will be chapters of content so what you would do then is essentially create a blog of the master the whole thing whole topic and then so go that 30 minute that transcription 30 minute, becomes a tidied up 
blog. that could be a tidied up blog that yeah. goes you know goes on our website um we can drive travel towards that but then those chapters then could be their own blogs so okay so by it, by pulling it down and down and down again so just unpack that again so let's say point one in that big long blog yeah how would you then take that and make that into another blog without just copying and pasting so there will be points in in there that you make when it comes to a topic. So you'll have like the main oh how to I'm going to off the top of my head. If you say you build your personal brand, want to be create content, that would be a chapter in itself because you would obviously have profile optimization. All right, so chapters. so you do um, how to build your personal brand as an article. Yep. We're coming up with ideas here, by the way. <laughs> how to build your personal brand, and one of them is prolifically produce content. Yeah. So then you could take that bit and go. Actually, I'm now going to do how to prolifically produce content for your personal brand. Yeah. And it's like more detail of that one point. Yeah. So it would be the, the types of content you can produce for that. And it would be like the best ways to produce that content, how to produce that content. It, like it all goes down and down. So you need to have that object view of it. You, we're, we're going we're gonna to be further ahead in our own field than we are other people who are trying to present this content to. So we need to keep asking the question, well, how do I do that? Well, why do I do that? We have to ask ourselves that question to then create yeah, other content. Yeah, I get you now. So, so basically, if you if you wrote a blog about personal branding, right, you'd probably ask yourself or say personal branding. You go, how? Yeah. How to build a personal brand? Okay. Why build a personal brand? Right, and then you create an answer. Then you ask how and why again. How and why again? And then it just keeps going down and down and down. And then you can even have it to a point where you've got a single social post, which is just like the the why to do this. And then that why at the end is because it will help build your personal brand. And then you can link that. And yeah. then you, you can work your way down and you will get way back up. Yeah. And everyone could be a video. Everyone could be a blog. And you could probably turn a blog. Let's say your blog has a couple of bullet points. You could do almost like a... A social media post which is like the summary yeah you know three things you need to do to build your personal brand you don't go into any detail you just say this 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 if you want to know more drop me a line kind of thing yeah you can like create a slide deck for it you know because i'll oh, go into more detail in this blog and then if you want to think of it as like i mean it's probably like a one of those catchphrase ways of saying it but say it's a content train you know whenever you post something you know it's part of you know, yeah. it's a stop on the way. And as you're posting, people will get picked up from it. Like yeah. people will go from Google, if you've got a blog, people will go from social media, um, Instagram, or the rest of social media. It all feeds that, you know, and they jump on board with your message. And then the more you're putting out there, the more. Yeah. And, join. Yeah. And then the, 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 the idea doesn't become the problem then. It's just about which ones do you do when. Yeah. And which ones matter more. But I guess you don't know until you try. Yeah, when you when you post it over, you'll see a response. If if you post something on on a certain topic from from your blog, and it got gets a lot of traction, you'll go, oh, I delve more into this, you know, further on down the line, and then you can really go into that. Um, but research and keyword topics will show you what people are looking at, like trending posts, for example, and trending topics and keywords. So you can make a really big long form piece of content. Because it'll, it'll take some time. The, the big content takes some time to make because yeah. you don't want to just write a whole load of, you know, blurb. <laughs> but having all of that effort and then just putting it out there and not doing anything with it is kind of what I think, not what a lot of people do, but what I see a lot of bigger businesses will spend a lot of time creating these big white papers and then leaving them sat on a landing page and not, not creating content traffic. past it. Yeah, not yeah. getting any traffic because of it. So four years ago, I think it was four years ago. I had this harebrained idea that we would create content for other people and said, Luke, you're it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were having to create content for, um, I think, around about 10 different people, five posts, social media posts per day. Yeah. For 10 people. And... That gave you a hard deadline because you had to have it done by a particular time. It had to be of specific industries. You kind of had no choice. Because it was client work, you have to have a review process, obviously. Yeah. So you needed but, to do it before and get it reviewed and, and create amends so we could then, you know, it could go, the content could be pushed forward. <laughs> but you, so a lot of people struggle with content. Do you think 
that having the ability to say, oh, I won't post makes it harder to create content. In other words, if you force your back, you have to. Yeah. Do you think not having that hard, un unmovable deadline f forces you into a habit to create content? I kind of get this on my own profile because I'm obsessed with getting Maverick content out there and making sure Maverick is, you know, forward on, on, the, on the content train. With my own posts sometimes, I feel like, oh, I could miss a day. I, I really try not to and I don't. But I do have that thing in my head where it's like, well, it's not rare. It's for me. I prefer to feed the Maverick train rather than, you know, push myself forward. So I do have that in the back of my head, like, oh, you don't really, you know, you get that thing, like a little devil on your shoulder going, well, it's only for you, you know, think more about yeah. Maverick. So I do think having, having to and having to will make you get a little bit more innovative. Because it's the same with when people are trying to, you know, grow their business and they're really struggling. They're like, they'll try everything mm -hmm. and they will find a way to do it. And that's the thing. If you if you don't have to, you won't find a way. Yeah, I suppose if, if business is doing well, you're like, ah, we don't need to change things right now. There's no rush. Yeah. You can put it off with very little consequence. But I think when you're, I think maybe a bit before that, like, do you remember? Do you remember when we were doing that social media for that bank? Do you remember? We yeah. used to have to churn out so many per day, and it all had to be like generic, because you couldn't really say anything without going through the uh, content police within the bank. So yeah, it all had to be like a bit wishy washy. It, it would be scrutinised by a law firm and being like, "Oh, yeah. we've got our own team of lawyers that says that you can't say this because it's defamation <laughs> or something." But it was like we did it. And it was, looking back on it now, it was like a bit crap compared to where what we do now. It was watered down, yeah. Yeah, I, it was wishy-washy. It and, was kind of a, a, a quote, a, a picture quote and, and, and some text yeah. to like drive the brand message forward. Yeah. And then it was kind of, the, the points themselves were, isn't this business great? And you know, for a fact that a lot of the time those posts don't really work. <laughs> <laughs> but, but... What I'm trying to get at is, even if, and maybe this is, I often tell people, just post. If it's crap, it's crap. But you'll get better by posting. I don't think you can improve your content without posting. Yeah. The thing is, it'll inspire you to post. If you have to post and you post crap, you'll see it's crap and then you'll beat yourself up about it. But then you might say, okay, I'm not going to make it crap anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I find like, when I do a video... I, I still struggle doing videos, but I do them because, you know, you kind of have to. Yeah. No, I don't have to. I could give myself the out, <laughs> but I do it because I have to do it. Uh, in me, I've set the rule. I have to do it. So I have to do it. You know, everyone in the office will question if you don't do a video out because you do it so often. <laughs> but are you okay? You? <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is, do you, I feel like even though, even if you look at the video and you go, it's crap. Even if you don't study it and kind of go, oh, I'm going to study this video and I'll see where I went wrong, make mental notes. I think you just automatically get better at it. Yeah. Especially when it comes to talking and, you know, creating podcasts and creating like video content. Because, I mean, we're trying this now with, I used to do the lives with all, with all the people in the, in the office. More people are coming on podcasts as well. Um, and it is training yourself to be on camera and talking and talking in a way which you don't feel like, I need to fill in this space right now. I can't not talk because there's a camera there, you're on camera, <laughs> there's lights above us, and you just sort of get in your own head about it. But the more you do it, the less pressure you give yourself and the better you become at it. Yeah, and it's like, I think about it now, and I don't know whether you can remember this, when I was, you know, still pre-record videos, I'm, I'm str I struggle with. They're the most difficult. But do you remember when we did those TikTok videos a few years back? Yeah. And it was like book reviews and stuff like that. They were just so awkward to do. And now I look at it and go, I do a TikTok video every day and I don't even think about it. And I'm like, I can't believe how far I've come, but I didn't make any conscious. I didn't go through it like, oh, I must not do this. I must do more of this. Yeah. It's just 
shit happens kind of thing and it just moves on we've done it pretty much every way you can think of we've done it where it was scripted and teleprompted we've done it where it was just a topic and to camera we've done it where um we've we do the snippets from the podcast which do really well so we, we've we've done it in so many different ways where you, you, when you find a flow you're like okay that's great now i can do it i can put it out there and i can be happy with it which yeah. is the hardest part i think for you is is being happy with it because i don't think you always oh, i should have said this i should have said this i should have said this but you can do it next time which is yeah. the whole point of okay i may have i have talked about this top, topic before but i can say it again i can say it better i can say it more concise and i can get my value across you just have to kind of force yourself to do it i i watch this guy on youtube and he uh he does videos about internet scammers and um he he's he did a series of videos where he decided he'd do a YouTube video every day. He's got a big channel, so big views and everything. But he decided to go on this, I'm going to do a video every day. He was like twice a week kind of heavily produced videos. And of course, once you go to once a day, some of the production, the editing, it all has to get sacrificed because you've got a machine running. Yeah. And he said what he found was whilst the quality of the production went down in terms of the edits and all the stuff he could do in the time. His fluency in doing it massively improved. So his ability to put scripts together faster, everything he did got more efficient. Yeah. Um, and he felt, he said his own confidence in producing content and putting it out increased because he'd forced himself to do it. He actually told everybody he was going to do it as well. So he, he kind of externally gave himself pressure. Yeah, he had to because he said, I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, and I think that's one thing that a lot of people miss is that when you've got that no pressure, um, you can tinker with a piece of content longer than you need to. You can rewrite it too many times. You can do all of this stuff that maybe, maybe gives it a one or two percent, it's better. Yeah. But actually, you'd get that, you'd gain that one or two percent by just being a machine. I mean, if you're going to go for really high quality stuff, um, a lot of the, if you look on YouTube now, the people who can post once every month are people who've had like a huge following. And whenever they post, it's like an event. Yeah, but when you're trying to grow a channel and, and grow your own content, you have to be consistently putting something out there to get your face out there. Um, and yeah, if if you're having to do that daily, it's going to take either a huge production team with a lot of money to manage that, or you can just sit down, um, say, okay, I've only got this amount of long time to get this out there, so I'm going to write my script, I'm going to film it, I'm going to tweak it, I'll sacrifice a few graphics here and there, but make sure it is out. Mm -hmm. And then you get better. So when you're putting your content together, so when you're writing posts or writing blogs, how do you prevent yourself from getting into that rabbit hole of improvement, 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 improvement? The reason being is I know you've got 84 blogs to get out before the end <laughs> of the 84 blogs before the end of the month. Yeah, we have to post at least. I mean, I don't want to tank our site by having loads of it all go at once. So just so the, we have to consistently the, put it out. The there. backstory to this is you're, we've got a whole load of content that we've been working on for a while to try and get out. Yeah, Stuff gets in the way. We give ourselves a hard deadline. And you're like, we cannot put 84 blogs out in one go. So we're having to do so many per day. How do you manage that? from a point of view of, I want the quality, but I don't want to just obsess about something unnecessarily. So the best way of doing that, I'd say is having someone else look at it sometimes. <laughs> Cause we've got a whole, we've got a whole content team full of people who, who, who are writers. And I feel like I'm intimidated sometimes when I show them like this stuff, because some of them are like classically trained <laughs> and it's just like, well, I just write my content because it's, you know, it's, it's a guide and it's, a, it's the, the whys and the hows. Um, but because I'm I'm part of marketing and a part of the Maverick brand, I want to make sure everything goes out is of quality. They, they look at me like, is this good enough? Is this good enough? And they can stress about, is this going to be good enough? And it was, it was a few times where I was like, maybe change the tone in this way. But it's having someone there to look at that and not just... Because you can be your own worst critic. 
because you will always try and change and, and you know update but unless you've got like i mean to listen to your audience my problem is i don't even see my own spelling mistakes that's a my <laughs> mine's not the mine's the opposite i don't see my own mistakes like um i've noticed when i write my head writes faster than my hands and so i'm onto the next word and i've not actually typed the word in between so why it's better to use those um captions instead where you, you can say it so you can say it out loud and then you can type it down because i feel i'm better typing than i am talking sometimes really or well, back in you know, yeah i suppose <laughs> actually i would say i prefer talking than typing because i think sometimes my head goes faster than i can type yeah because i mean when it comes to reviewing the stuff that we write it's usually shortening it down which is which is the thing so if you kept doing that consistently you would have like one sentence <laughs> you, did i ever tell you how i started my podcast oh well you know how i started my podcast well uh, maybe you do so my podcast plan when we first started my podcast the first thing we did was we stripped the audio from youtube videos so we took youtube videos and just basically put the audio on the podcast yeah uh, that's the first thing but then i was like i want to do lots of episodes so you know what I don't know if I've ever told anybody that this is what I did. It said, I'm just going to go on with a piece of paper saying this is what I'm going to talk about. And I'm just going to ponder it to myself on a podcast. <laughs> but I, I know that sounds really weird. I got some people saying that was really interesting, actually. But it was me having a conversation with myself. With a stream of consciousness in your head. Yeah. Like, what about this? Going, yeah, what about this? Uh, and, and I found it really helpful. Because it distilled my ideas. It's probably not the best way to do a podcast. <laughs> but I found it really useful to go, do you know what? I'm just going to do it. Um, if nobody listens to it, nobody listens to it. Um, and we get people every day listening to my podcast now, which is quite cool considering it's not even a year old. No, it's not even a year old. That's weird to think because I feel like it's been whenever, whenever you get a process of putting stuff out there and filming and putting it out there, you feel like I've been doing this for ages. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's a year old in in January. You can do like a anniversary special. <laughs> yeah, but the first couple of months, it was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come up with something. I'm gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna almost use the podcast to distill my ideas. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a good idea because then you can like transcribe that, and like we said before, that's how you can create that content. Like, yeah, clear your thoughts out. Pick out the best points, elaborate on the points, and make it so everyone of every mindset can understand it. Yeah. And so one podcast, one distilled podcast could then become, you know, loads of tweets. It could be loads of LinkedIn posts. It could be uh, another blog. Um, it could be several blogs. All of this stuff can come from just having what we call one masterpiece of content that you create that then you just distill that into other things. Yeah, it's weird though, because you get that sort of content creation mindset where every time you look at something or do something, you're like, that's content, that's content, that's content. Like all the time, it's having that bit where you think of something or you've written something down and or you've like talked to a friend. Like we a lot of, uh, a lot of the ideas, which I think uh, I've created with you was on a drive to an event where yeah. we're like, okay, this, like, let's talk about this topic. How can we get this better? How can we do this? How can we do this? And we do get a lot of good talks and good ideas from that, just yeah. by like chatting. Yeah, you just have to talk it out. But I think one of the worst ways you could approach content is go, right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write a post now. And try and come up with the idea and write it at the same time. I found that really difficult. If you have the idea, if you have the idea, make a note of it. Because sometimes when you're wandering around, you actually develop that post idea in your head like kind of forms and then when you come to sit and write kind of write it down then you've got actually a half developed idea just because you wrote it down somewhere else and let it like mull over yeah when you come back to it if it's fresh in your head it's easier to write yeah i think the hard bit is if you sat down right now and went okay i'm gonna write a post now and then it's like countdown, do, 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 trying to figure out what am I writing about? What's the point I want to make? Why does this matter? Is it important for me? That is the most impossible thing to do. Just literally sit down and try and do it as a self-contained thing. Yeah. Best advice I've got for writing is to do your edits last. Because if you're writing and then you're like, oh, I'll change that sentence now, 
you'll get into a flow. And then if you interrupt the flow, it can get stagnant. And what you can happen then is when you write a po- when you write a sentence, you tweak that. The next sentence will be a bit disjointed because you're starting again. The flow has stopped. So it's like brain dump and then distill. Yeah, that's probably the best way of doing it. But I, I would still, I would say, ideas separate from construction. Yeah, go into writing with already the idea and, and the mindset. Don't just sit down and go, give me ideas, brain. Yeah, <laughs> and the point. Why Why does this post matter? Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people just write things and I'm like, okay, that's nice. Why are you telling me this again? <laughs> <laughs> I did a post the other day with a picture of a fly because I was talking about you know, procrastination and, and content. So it did have a point, but in my head, I had so many people in the comments going, this has got 30 likes and it's a picture of a fly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's also the other point on the, some of this stuff. Some, you know, we talked about like going de- into more detail, drilling down, but actually sometimes just stating the obvious can actually be a really good post. I did one... I did one the other day. It got 78 likes and about eight and 9,000 views and impressions on LinkedIn. And it was just, there's only 81 days left in 2022. Hmm. What's your plan? <laughs> I was like, oh, just simple messages. I think sometimes... Yeah, it's, it's thought-provoking though, isn't it? Because people are like, oh, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> it's like sometimes we, we, over, we over-egg things and we try and give too much in one go. When actually just telling people the obvious or reminding people of things that are obvious, yeah, you know, become really important. Uh, I think life is so busy, life is so complicated, there's so many things we overlook that actually just looking at all of those things and going, every so often I'm going to give my ideal clients a nudge to remind them of this can be really powerful. Um, just like templates, little templates. People yep. love templates. Why do they love templates? Because sometimes thinking about what what this needs to include becomes difficult. Yeah, if you have somewhere to work from, it's always best because you can just over... You can, if you don't oversimplify, you can just skim past the obvious, can't you? Yeah. And it was like, oh, why are you doing that for? Oh, that's a good point, actually, because you can just go through it. Like, we, I put something out there which was saying, oh, um... This is how you can do this without creating this. And I had created that. <laughs> and it was like, oh, why have I done that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I, I think, yeah, sometimes sometimes we do miss the obvious. And I think sometimes just telling people the obvious stuff, we might think, oh, they all know that. Everybody knows that. And maybe they do, but the reminder was powerful. Yeah. Reminding people of something is powerful. I don't know what else to say, Luke, other than content is just like, you've got to kind of give yourself a hard deadline. Yeah. You've got to force yourself to do it and you've got to kind of break everything down and, and, and go into as much, like, I think the best thing we've said today is like, every time you create a piece of content, ask yourself how and why, because that creates another two pieces of content. And then if you ask another how and why, it creates another two pieces of content. You just follow the highs and the whys. Yeah. How's and wise. So, guys, thank you for joining our little me and Luke ramble. Hopefully it's been useful. Do go find and keep an eye on Luke. Tell him he should set himself a hard deadline on his own posts. <laughs> um, but thanks for joining us. Do follow, like, subscribe, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. And we will do more to help you grow your business, get more clients, and make more money in your business.